Hey guys, do you own an Elmo Sound ST1200 HD M2 track Super 8 millimeter projector like this one? Did your belts melt inside and turn to black goop as mine did? Have you replaced most of your belts already? But the big problem is that shutter wheel belt. The shutter wheel belt has to be scraped off the wheel, cleaned up, and then if you went on the internet, you saw there was only one seller that had replacement belts and he was selling them for $27 each. If you bought one, you probably found out that it didn't work. But today you're going to find out how to make a substitute belt that does work at a cost of about 10 bucks. All right, so here we go. As you see on the table, these are all the things you need to make your own shutter wheel belt for your Elmo sound projector. First, you're going to need a screwdriver with a Phillips head to take off the back of the projector cover. You're going to need a ruler. I use a steel one. It's easy to use and easy to cut with. There's a razor knife and there's Weldwood contact cement, which runs about $5 at your local Lowe's or Home Depot store. Now, the rubber thing you see here, the pad here, I'm going to bring this a little closer so you can read it. All right, this is a rubber packing sheet that I picked up at Lowe's. It was around $5. It's in their plumbing department. Now, the reason I picked it up is because it's nice and thin. It's about a sixteenth of an inch thin. I can cut it into strips, use some contact cement, glue them together, and then we're going to show you how to glue it onto the shutter wheel. First step is Let's go through the procedure of taking off the back of the cover and I'll show you the rest of it. As you see on the table, these are all the things you need to make your own shutter wheel belt for your Elmo sound projector. First, you're going to need a screwdriver with a Phillips head to take off the back of the projector cover. You're going to need a ruler. I use a steel one. It's easy to use and easy to cut with. There's a razor knife and there's Weldwood contact cement, which runs about $5 at your local Lowe's or Home Depot store. Now, the rubber thing you see here, the pad here, I'm going to bring this a little closer so you can read it. All right, this is a rubber packing sheet that I picked up at Lowe's. It was around $5. It's in their plumbing department. Now, the reason I picked it up is because... It's nice and thin. It's about a sixteenth of an inch thin. I can cut it into strips, use some contact cement, glue them together, and then we're going to show you how to glue it onto the shutter wheel. First step is let's go through the procedure of taking off the back of the cover. Cover now, there's two Phillips head screws in here. We're going to take those out, put more here, and the cover's off. You're going to see the shutter wheel, and you can see that this has been completed already and I'm going to show you how I did that in a moment okay all the other belts have been replaced all right there's a good video on YouTube that helped me do that as well and uh, the big key here is this shutter belt so first I, I took off all the old goop the black stuff cleaned it up so that I'm down to the bare metal now, some people say that maybe you can use it without the rubber shutter wheel band, but you can't do this. And I'm going to show you with a photo. 
that I shot. There's a distance of about, oh, three sixteenths of an inch between the wheel and the belt that drives it. So we needed to create our own rubber belt for this particular uh, thing to work properly. Okay, I'm gonna move the projector aside for now because I'm gonna show you how to cut the belt. Okay, I took my ruler. In this particular case, <clears throat> I'm gonna make the width of this particular band one eighth of an inch. So we're gonna measure in an eighth of an inch. I make a couple of marks here. These are gonna be my cutting marks. And then I'm gonna take my razor knife Line up my ruler carefully. So we get a straight cut. Okay, so there's the first one. And as you can see, we're going to cut four more. Originally when I did this, I made it 3 sixteenths of an inch, but then I had to trim it because it was a little bit too wide once I installed it. Uh, you can do that also if you feel more comfortable. So now what we're going to do with these strips, now I've measured the distance around this wheel. By taking a strip, making a mark on the wheel, turn it around, and then I realized I needed two, two of these lengthwise and a little bit more, probably about this much more, to complete the length that I needed to cover the wheel. So the next step now is we're going to take our weldwood contact cement, we'll shake it up a little bit, and I'm going to put a little piece of paper under here, just to protect my top here. Now the good thing about the cement is you're going to let it dry for anywhere from 15 minutes up to two hours. All right. And then once we apply it to this and we have our belt, we're going to do the same thing to the metal shutter wheel. Okay. So we're going to let this dry for 15 minutes. And then we're going to come back While we're waiting and for show you how this all comes together. The contact cement to dry. We're going to take off this flywheel over here. It's just got like a little cotter pin in here. And we're just going to pop that out. All right. We're going to remove the holding clamp. A little washer over here also. And we're going to take this off. And the reason we're going to do that is because, as you can see now, we have a much better view of the belt and it makes the access a lot easier. So you can get in here now and work on this particular belt. Now you'll notice as I'm turning it, 
the wheels over here, the pulley wheels are turning as well, which means it's making the proper contact. And when we turn the projector on later, you're going to see that it works. If these wheels are not turning when you're doing this, then you did something wrong. Now you can see here, this little spot over here where there's a little separation. This is where I cut the two belts or the belts so that they fit properly and it wasn't as tight as I would have liked it, but it won't make any difference because as you can see, it still catches and turns. So these pieces have been basically glued together, butted together to make the band that you see here. I put these together, the strips together. So, so in order to get the length that we needed, we added the two little pieces here. All right, and then we're gonna start laying it onto the reel. I'm gonna show you a picture of how we did that. Uh, I can't do it again now, but I can give you an idea of what's involved, okay? So let's get the projector back over here because now, assuming that this is not on here and you're dealing with the uh, metal reel, Okay, you're going to take your contact cement once again and carefully so you don't get goop all over the place. You're going to start spreading it all over the wheel, the metal wheel. Okay, so as you turn it, you got your brush and you're brushing the contact cement in here. So now we finished with that. We're now going to wait for the glue to dry here. And now with this piece, we're going to coat this all with contact cement as well. Okay. So once we do that, assuming that now everything is dry, we waited 15 to 20 minutes or longer. You can wait up to two hours. We're going to start laying in this into... And let me see if I can uh, just open this up a little bit so you can get an idea. So little by little, we're going to take this and it's contact cement from the rubber hitting the contact cement on the rubber on the wheel. And we're going to go all the way around, all the way around, little by little by little by little by little by little by little, by little and it's done. Now, in my particular case, when I cut it, I cut it a little bit wider than <coughs> the rubber. So it overlapped just, just a fraction of an inch. I mean, this, this is now looking like, uh, it's hard for me to tell here, but let me just see if I can do this. Um, this is about an eighth of an inch wide. All right, I originally cut it a 3 16 of an inch it was a little overlapping. It really wouldn't affect anything because it would still clear anything. But what I did do is I took my razor knife and I went little by little and I just cut it flush with the metal wheel. But I'm a little anal. It's really not necessary. As I said, even if it comes over a little bit, it's not going to make a difference because there's plenty of clearance between this edge where it has to be, okay? So now you can see that the wheel is on, everything looks right. And what I'm gonna do is, whoop, okay. What I did is I had uh, grease, this orange stuff that's meant for high heat, uh, these are for automobiles. It's a special grease that I had, but you can get the white greases and there's other greases that you could use. And I put some on all the wheels so that they would, uh, you know, just run smoothly now. Um, it was making a little bit of a clattering noise prior to this, and then when I put the grease on, that stopped. So, as you can see now, we have a shutter wheel. And if we bring this back in, we can see as we turn the wheel, the wheel is turning the way we want it to turn, the shutter wheel. 
this is your adjustment for 18 or 24 frames. So the large wheel or the small wheel. They both work. But as I say, the proof is in the pudding. So what we're going to do is I'm going to reassemble everything, uh, put the wheel back on, and then show you how everything uh, seems to work properly. And the sound is good also. All right, so we're going to flip this back over again. Let's redo what we took off, if we can. Let me come back out here. Okay. So this wheel goes back on, the washer, the clip, and we're going to push this down a little bit so we can get to it, and we're going to slip in this cotter pin again uh, just to hold it in place. Okay. All right, so everything is good. All right. Bear with me. We're going to now plug in. And be careful, guys. This is all open now, so I don't want you to get electrocuted by touching something that you shouldn't be touching. good here looks good here we're gonna flip this around now And you can see it's working. Once we put the back on, it won't be as noisy. You won't be hearing all this noise, which I'm going to do now. And then I'm going to show you okay, the going to go back how to on now. properly. Okay guys, so that's basically how I did it. As you can see, it works. It may make a little noise, and I think that's because of the gears or some other reasons, but I'll have to go back in and see if I can lubricate some things um, again, just to it quiet it down a little bit. Uh, but obviously, uh, it works. You can see that this projector was basically useless before I fixed it, and uh, I didn't have to spend $27 on a shutter wheel belt that obviously didn't work. And even if it did work, you would have to disassemble everything to get it on that wheel. The only way you can get it on that wheel is the way I did it, which is with the contact cement, one long strip, turning the wheel, getting it in place, and letting it rock and roll. So I hope this helps you guys. I know a lot of you are frustrated. Uh, you have the projectors. You haven't been able to use it. Uh, you might have spent $38 online to buy replacement belts, you know, with the shutter uh, belt as well. And I don't know anybody or I've seen anything on the Internet that shows that the shutter belt uh, actually worked. Uh, and uh, I did get... Uh, some correspondence from I sell belts, uh, the young man that sells all the belts on the internet. And um, we've been back and forth about the solution for this. And um, I was ready to give up. 
And uh, he then wrote me and he says, Len, I've got some bad news. Uh, I just found out that the Shota belt is not working. I've got some complaints from buyers. Um, so uh, he doesn't have a solution anymore. And this is the solution. The contact cement and a razor knife. All right, so bye for now. Check out all my videos. I've got 300 videos on YouTube. It's youtube.com slash lenrap. That's L-E-N-R-A-P-P. -P. You're going to see it in the titles below this video. Uh, I have a great website. It's called Impress Magazine. I publish loads of articles. Uh, we've got 300 videos up on YouTube right now. Subscribe to me on YouTube. Uh, everything from covering the Macy's Parade to how to do things. Uh, there's just a, an awful lot of stuff there. And on Impress Magazine, you're going to see all my great articles with loads of beautiful photographs uh, and lots of videos as well. Okay, if you're a photographer or a journalist, join us at IPA. That's International Press Association. Our members get press ID. They go out and cover real events. They write about it. They publish on our website. They gain access to all sorts of great things. And uh, as I said before, you know, we learn by doing. And that's why YouTube is so great, because it gives us all these great videos on how to fix things and how to do things. Uh, if it wasn't for YouTube, I don't know where I'd be. But frankly, I fix everything in my house, from the furnace to the stove to just about any kind of plumbing uh, items because of YouTube and the instructional videos there. So I hope you like this video. Give me a thumbs up. Okay. And uh, if you have any questions, just write them below the YouTube video or just send me an email. It's Len Rapp. It's L-E-N-R-A-P 43 at gmail.com.